Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord here today. Amen. And I know if he's here, everything's going to be all right. Amen. I'm glad you're here. Amen. But I'm, I'm also glad that the Lord is here as well. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I feel a burden on my heart here today. If you have your Bibles, we want to turn to the book of Exodus. Amen. Exodus chapter number 17. I don't know how far I will get today, but I feel such a burden in my spirit, amen, and the Lord knows what we need when we need it, and I pray that this would be a blessing uh, to you that are here as well as for those that are watching online, amen. We have had some folks that have been very faithful online, amen, and we're thankful for you, amen. One day we'd love to get to see you, uh, your wonderful face in person in the house of the Lord, amen. Amen. But just keep on tuning in, keep on pressing in, keep on calling on the Lord as you are. Amen. And I'm confident that the Lord uh, is going to continue to do a work in your life here today. Amen. Also thankful for those that are faithful to the house of God in person. Amen. Uh, verse number eight of Exodus chapter number 17. The Bible says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11, it says, And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand uh, that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' his hands were heavy. Everyone say, Moses' his hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him and sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, and one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady into the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Now here's a promise in verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. In other words, what that means is the Lord is my banner. And for he said, because the Lord has sworn that he that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Amen. With the help of the Lord and your help, I want to preach to us today. Don't forget Amalek. Don't forget Amalek. Let's put our Bibles down one more time. Let's just lift up our hands to the Lord here all across the building. Amen. For those that are watching online where you're at here today, lift up your hands. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God. We're so grateful for your presence, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, for what we have felt in this house thus far. But, Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that you would meet us here, God, that you would complete the work that which you have set out to do in this house here today. I pray, God, let us be hungry for your word, Lord. I'm hungry, God, to hear from you, Lord. I want to hear. God, I want to be changed. I want to be transformed, God. I want a renewed mind. I want a challenged spirit here today. I pray in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, meet us here. Let your glory rest in this house. Bring understanding, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. My, what a journey the children of Israel were on in our text that we are uh, read here today. They're approximately 42 to about 46 days from the exodus from Egypt. Uh, this journey uh, was a journey that was that they endured many highs and many lows. Uh, scripture cues us in on a few high moments. And the first high moment here that we find in uh, scripture is that the children of Israel 400 and plus years into slavery in Egypt and Pharaoh let them go and they were on their way after all of the plagues that God had, had rained down on Egypt and now God gave them uh, now deliverance from the hand of Pharaoh and Pharaoh said get out of my house and, and you're, you are more trouble than you are good any longer and we see here and on the way out the door there were Egyptians there uh, that they finally had favor with those that the Egyptians were afraid of these Israelites. And, and if the Israelites asked them of anything, those Egyptians would give them whatever they wanted. The Bible says that they gave them silver and gold and jewelry and all articles of clothing, whatever they asked for. Can I tell you here today quickly, and this is not my message, but God keeps good books. 
God knows, amen, the sacrifices. God knows what you have endured. Amen. God knows, amen, what you have paid forward into his kingdom. Amen. The Bible says, amen, that we should lay up ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt. Amen. Every time you show up, every time you give, every time you are faithful, every time you sacrifice, you may not see it right now in the moment. Amen. It may cost you something, but can I tell you, rest assured, amen, that God keeps good books. Amen. That God is faithful. Amen. God showed up. Amen. And he showed, amen, his delivering power there, amen, at the Red Sea when the waters parted and the Israelites passed over on dry ground. But the pursuing Pharaoh's armies there, amen, were were chasing after them. But it was not very long until those waters came back, amen, and the, 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 the armies of Pharaoh were consumed and they were destroyed. God turned bitter water there at Marah, amen, to sweet water when they needed water. God, amen, met them there. We can read in Exodus 15, just a few chapters before we read, and I encourage you to do it. Amen. To read Exodus 15, it was there, the song of Moses and Miriam, a song of great deliverance of all the great exploits in the hand of a delivering God, amen, that is shown strong in the life of the children of Israel. We see it there on the pages, amen, of Exodus 15. We see in another high point how God provided manna for them to eat when they were hungry, and God provided them quail when they wanted flesh to eat. But I want to tell you here today, do not get confused. Amen. This was not all, amen, fairy tales. This was all not unicorns and butterflies and cupcakes and everything was great and there was nothing for them to worry about, but they had to endure some low moments on this journey to the promised land. They had to endure some moments of weariness and some moments of need and some moments of want. Amen. Some days they went days, amen, without water and food. Uh, amen grumbling and mumbling and sometimes we read scripture and we see the children of Israel murmuring uh, and complaining we look down our nose at them uh, and say look at these ungrateful wretches uh, that God had delivered them and they still are hungry uh, and they're still crying uh, and they're still murmuring but can I tell you you and I uh, amen go through some hard points uh, but can I tell you they're just like you and I uh, we all go through some hard moments uh, amen and I thank God for his grace uh, and that he didn't look down his nose at me uh, when I was mumbling and grumbling, wondering, God, when are you going to show up? And when are you going to be the God that you say you are? Amen. I'm so grateful that God did not turn his back on me. Amen. In those moments of despair and frustration, we see them there, amen, enduring this hardship, days without rest, days they were weary, and in days they seen their kids crying to their mom and dad and saying, when uh, are we just going to get something else to eat? Uh, When are we going to, where's our next meal coming from? Uh, Amen. How is this any better than the house of Egypt? Uh, Amen. We see it here, days without rest. Uh, Can I tell you, there were even days, the Bible tells us, uh, amen, that the the children of Israel, uh, when Moses would call to them, it would be good to proclaim to them, thus saith the Lord. Uh, Amen. They would look back at Moses and say, just let us alone. Uh, Leave us alone, man of God. Uh, We don't want to hear from you any longer. Amen. We're we're going through it. Amen. We don't want to hear it any longer. We're already tired enough and you are still asking for more and we don't want to keep on moving. We don't want to keep on pushing. Amen. We just don't want to hear it. They became weary. Days when the journey didn't seem worth it. Days Man, the days they had looked back fondly at the house of bondage. Man, it is a hard journey into promise. Man, if any one of us can be real with ourselves here today, doesn't it sound familiar to some of us? Amen. Doesn't it sound familiar to us that life has its ups and its downs? Amen. That we endure bitter moments as well as sweet moments. That that we are sometimes in great need and other times of just enough. And and sometimes there are times of great abundance. Amen. But Ecclesiastes chapter number 3 tells us uh, that there is a season for everything. Uh, Amen. That things are going to come and things are going to go. Uh, Amen. But we have to trust the God uh, of the seasons. Amen. Uh, That we don't make decisions. And I'm getting ahead of myself here, but we don't make decisions on how we feel right now. 
Amen. That we don't make up our mind based on how we feel right now. But we got to understand that sometimes we are going to endure some hard seasons. That we are going to endure some seasons. What we feel like heaven is like brass and God is not speaking to us like he used to. And there's going to be seasons, amen, of famine and seasons of hunger and seasons of want and seasons of impatience. But we got to make sure that we make up our mind that I'm going to make it past this thing. Amen. That I'm going to keep on showing up. And I'm going to keep on being faithful because I don't serve the season, but I serve the God of the season. I serve the God that holds the seasons in his hands. But in our text here today, we read that they have arrived to a place called Rephidim. This place, uh, the Bible, we, I've talked about this before in Bible study, amen, and in discipleship classes and other things that, the Bible does not use words uh, 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 just because it sounds cool. The Bible names things for a reason. This this word "rephidim," being directly translated, means a resting place. It was here at this place of rest that the Israelites now are encountering their first battle on the outside of Egypt. Amen. It is here, amen, that they are now enduring and they're going to have to face their first battle as a people group, amen, and a slave that are no longer slaves, but a people. And we see here, amen, the time before when God had delivered them out of the hand of Egypt, that God had led them around the land of the Philistines. Amen. This was not unintentional, but this was on purpose because God understood. The Bible says it clearly and specifically. It says that if I would bring them through the land of the Philistines, that God was concerned that the condition, amen, the, 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 the disparity of their ability to fight, that they would get in a fight and that they would say, you know what, I, instead of fighting this, I'd rather go back to Egypt. Egypt. They turn around and say, I, I'm not dealing with this. I'm going back to where I came from. And God said, no, they're not ready to fight. But now here they are after enduring some hardship on the journey. And now they're getting to a place of rest that they are now going to have to fight the Amalekites here at this place of rest. Again, doesn't this sound familiar in how life, uh, amen, you finally feel that you are starting to tread water. Now you finally feel uh, that you are st- finally getting ahead on the balance book uh, and on the checkbook. That you finally feel that you are getting ahead uh, in one area and then boom, uh, life hits you again uh, where it hurts. And now the enemy has a way uh, of attacking us in that moment uh, and in those places of vulnerability. Uh, amen. Your marriage starts getting to right uh, and every, you start having peace in the home. Uh, amen. And next thing you know, you get a phone call from your kid, amen, and they're wilding out, and they're in a mess, amen, but can I tell you, this is how the enemy does, he tries to attack us in a place of rest, amen, you start feeling like everything's all right, and then your health starts failing you, amen, you, you, you're here at this place of rest, Man, and we see it here. This is exactly uh, where they are at. They didn't encounter them on the road, uh, amen, of toil and the road place of strength, uh, amen, but rather they attacked them at a place of resting. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 25, this is Moses admonishing Joshua before handing the reins over as they're reciting the law of God. In verse number 25, chapter number 25 and verse 17, he says, Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you come out of Egypt, how he attacked you on the way when you were faint and weary and cut off your tail on those that were lagging behind you. He did not fear God. Therefore, when the Lord your God has given you the rest from all your enemies around you in the land that your Lord God has given you, for an inheritance to possess. You shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. You shall not forget. What is the scripture here admonishing? Is you have to destroy Amalek. Indeed, you got to destroy, amen, the spirit of Amalek in your life. Amen, but you should never forget Amalek. You should never sleep on Amalek. And Moses here was referring when they finally possessed this promised land, amen, that they are supposed to, from that place of strength, destroy that spirit and Amalek. Amen. But Amalek was not just going to be a problem on the journey to the promised land. But Amalek was something that they were going to have to contend with even in the promised land. Amalek was someone and a group of people they were supposed to keep their eye on. Can I tell you here today, you and I are not fighting a physical battle. Amen. We don't have to deal with marauding bandits like Amalek. Amen. But we are fighting a spiritual battle. Amen. And that a battle for our 
our soul, a battle for our eternity. And can I tell you here today, let us never forget the spirit of Amalek. Amen. The spirit that will love to kick you when you are down. The spirit that wants to say you have no place of rest. Amen. That there is no rest for you. Amen. That you are not going to make it. Amen. We got to contend with that spirit of Amalek that tries to grip your mind. Amen. And begin to... Come on, somebody, a spirit that says that God's blood is not enough, a spirit that says there is no peace, there is no joy, that it is not going to get better in the morning, amen, that there is no end to your toil, there is no end to your pain, but can I tell you here today, that's just the spirit of Amalek, that's just the spirit that tries to kick you in the places that you are weak. Hallelujah, there is an enemy of our soul that is looking to consume, that is looking to, 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 to destroy you, amen, to break your spirit, amen. But the Bible admonishes us in 1 Peter chapter number 5, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, amen, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, amen. Can I tell you here today, amen, although it's sometimes it seems that we have to contend with this, can I tell you, the enemy's destination is already fixed. Amen. The Bible tells us through the crushing. Amen. It was through the destruction of Jesus' body. It would be through that breaking of his body. Amen. That he would crush the head of the serpent. What does that mean? That means his destination is already fixed. Amen. He already knows where he's going. Amen. He already knows where he's at. Amen. He is under the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is already consumed and he is already destroyed. Amen. He is already under your feet and he's already under my feet. Amen. We already have the victory over him. But what is the enemy doing? He's looking for those that forgot where the enemy really belongs. He's looking for those that are weary. He's looking for those that are despondent and frustrated. Uh, he's looking for those, amen, uh, that no longer bring their cares to God. Uh, he's looking for those that are trying to fight this battle uh, in this journey of life on their own. Uh, amen. He is looking for those uh, that forgot where he really belongs. Uh, amen. And he, oh, you begin to open up yourself uh, to the spirit of Amalek that just begins to pick at your faith. Begins to just take out the rug from underneath you. Uh, it just begins to speak into your ear at night uh, and saying, God uh, forgot where you are. Uh, and God doesn't care about you any longer. Uh, amen. And God has moved on from you. Uh, amen. And those promises don't mean anything any longer. Uh, amen. That is just the spirit of Amalek. Uh, although he's something we have to contend with. Uh, I'm here today to remind you uh, that his place uh, is already under your feet. The scripture also tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 11, to not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, to be aware of his schemes and how he works. Uh, just like that, just like Amalek, uh, the devil will always attack us in two places. The devil will attack us places of our weakness and our vulnerabilities. And the enemy will always attack us in a place of rest. Those are the two places that the enemy will always try to attack us. I want to talk to us today just for the next few moments about this place uh, of weariness. It was Amalek here. Uh, you got to understand where Amalek comes from. Uh, Amalek, the descent, were descendants of Esau. Uh, amen. It was Esau, amen, that came home one day from a bad hunting day. Uh, and he smelled the smell, amen, of a nice lentil soup uh, that his brother was cooking there, Jacob, in the tent. Uh, and he goes to his brother and he says, brother, I'm hungry. Uh, and if I don't eat, I'm going to die. Uh, I need to eat something. And his brother says, well, give me your birthright. Uh, and he says, what good is a birthright uh, if I'm dead tomorrow? Can I tell you, Esau was not going to die. But Esau was weary in that moment. And Esau made an exchange that was going to be grave for his future and for his family and for his lineage and for his genealogy. And it was there in that moment of weakness, uh, amen, that he exchanged something of value for something uh, of very little temporal value. 
Can you imagine? We read it all the time in Scripture that says uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Can you imagine uh, if Esau didn't exchange his birthright there for that moment? Uh, it would be Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. It wouldn't be Jacob. Uh, but we see here that Esau in that moment of weakness made an exchange. And it was there. I can imagine just, uh, just as in most of those cultures back in that day, it was there. Uh, the patriarch that the young children uh, would sit at the feet of their grandfather. Uh, it would begin to recount stories of his childhood uh, and his great exploits and all the things that he did. Uh, but I can imagine leeching out of the spirit of Esau, uh, vitriol, toxicity that coming out of him saying, oh, uh, it could have been me. You see, your uncle Jacob, uh, that could have been me. Uh, amen. I, we despise Jacob. Uh, and who who they are and what they stand for. Uh, amen. We are people. Uh, amen. Because of a moment of weakness, now we are going to pray uh, on other people's moments of weakness. That's the spirit of Amalek. That's something that was instilled in their heart. And we see here Amalek now taking advantage uh, of people. Amen. We see them as, as the children of Israel generations later are going down the road. And we see the weary, the weak, the elderly, the feeble. The children, the mothers, uh, that Amalek would come behind and cut them down and, and take them and destroy them. Every time you see, uh, amen, the Amalekites in Scripture, uh, you always see them in a position where they're taking advantage uh, of somebody in their lowest and weakest moments. From David to Saul, we see it constantly uh, through kings and judges and Gideon. Throughout all these stories, every time Amalek raises its head, uh, it's always to take advantage uh, of somebody's vulnerability. That's the spirit uh, of Amalek, amen. Uh, and we read here in our text in Exodus 17, Amalek uh, prevailed against Israel every time uh, that Moses' hands begin to weary. Amen. They begin to win the battle. It's because that's where Amalek thrives. It's in that place uh, of weariness. When Moses would lift up that, uh, that rod of God, amen, that delivered them through the Red Sea, uh, the rod of God, amen, that, that opened up that rock uh, where they got the water from, that rod of God, the extension of God's hand uh, every time, uh, amen, that Moses' hands wearied. Uh, it was there that Amalek began to prevail over Israel. Uh, but we see two men, Aaron and Hur, said, you know what, I understand. I'm seeing it now that Amalek prevails. Amen. When Moses' hands get weak. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to become a strength to one another. We're going to lock arms here today. And we're going to lift up your hands when you are weak. I'm getting ahead of myself. But can I tell you, amen, that's what you are to me. And I pray that's what I am to you. And this is what we are doing in the house of God. We're not just singing a couple songs. Amen. We're not here just to hear a pretty sermon. But what are we doing? Uh, amen. We are resisting uh, the spirit of Amalek. Uh, amen. I know you've been made fight in hell all week long. Uh, amen. But I'm here today to tell you, brother, uh, and I'm here today to tell you, sister. Uh, amen. I'm here today uh, to prevail against the spirit of Amalek in your life. Uh, amen. There is a God uh, of strength uh, and there is a God uh, of rest uh, that desires, amen, to speak and work in your life here today. <laughs> It is no coincidence that where you are in a weak place, when you are feeling weary, when you are spiritually weak, when you are physically weak, that the old ways of thinking begin to creep back into your mind. Old behaviors begin to crop back up. Amen. Old relationships start beginning to knock on the door. Amen. Old traps and old places that you've been. Amen. Things that you think you conquered and you beat begin to stick their head back up. Why? It's because the enemy always works in those places of weakness. The Bible tells the saint of God in Galatians chapter number 6 and verse 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I'm here today to proclaim to you, saint of God, don't stop. Amen. Getting a hold of the horns of the altar of God. Amen. Don't stop pressing into the presence of God. Don't stop showing up to the house of God. Don't stop. Amen. When you are weary, this is where you need to be. Why? It's because you are remembering Amalek, and you were warring with the spirit of Amalek. You know, it was the Apostle Paul that understood this well in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. It tells us, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory, rather glory.
glory and my infirmities, uh, that the power of Christ uh, may rest upon me. Uh, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and uh, in necessities and persecutions and uh, in distress for Christ's sake. Uh, for when I am weak, uh, then uh, am I strong. Uh, what was Paul saying here? Uh, he was saying, I do not ignore, uh, amen, these weaknesses. I do not ignore, uh, amen, these vulnerabilities. I do not ignore them and put on a brave face and say everything is all right. Uh, no, uh, I look them in the face uh, and I say, I understand. Uh, that's where the spirit of Amalek thrives. Uh, and therefore, what am I going to do? Uh, I am going to lift up the banner of God uh, over my weaknesses. Uh, amen. I'm going to call on my Jehovah Nisi, uh, my banner. Uh, and you know what a banner was? Uh, amen. It was what they carried into battle uh, that signified where they came for uh, or where they came from and who their father is. Uh, amen. And who are they fighting for uh, and who their identity is? Can I tell you? Uh, amen. That's what we got to do uh, in these moments. Uh, amen. Of weakness. Uh, we got to remind ourselves who we belong to. Uh, amen. We got to remind ourselves who our father is. Uh, we got to remind ourselves. Uh, amen. What spirit we walk in. Uh, we got to remind ourselves uh, that we are not fighting this battle alone. Uh, amen. We got to remind ourselves. Uh, amen. That we are his children. what the Apostle Paul was doing there. He said, I don't ignore my weaknesses. But I just lift up the banner. I just call on my Jehovah Nisi. Amen. And it's there that the Jehovah Nisi begins to rest on my life. And when he rests on me, I find the rest that I need in him. Amen. Can I follow me just for a moment? I know I'm going a little long, but I want you to follow with me here just for a moment. You know, weakness can present itself in a very unique way. Sometimes most of us think of weaknesses as frailty, where we're just kind of stumbling our way through and stumbling our way in. And there's some moments, amen, if anybody could just be real in the house of God, sometimes we just stumble our way in, amen. Sometimes, I, I know when I was working long shifts and long hours and seven-day work weeks, and, and I remember sometimes pulling into my driveway and wondering how in the world did I get home. <laughs> Thank God for rumble strips on the highway. Sometimes just weary. We think of weariness that way. But can I tell you that the enemy works in other vulnerabilities in our life that do not present themselves this way. The Bible tells us that God had a remedy for Amalek. That God desired to destroy Amalek. This is probably one of the starkest and most gravest texts that you can read in Scripture. One that will have you scratching your head and questioning much. Amen. It is in 1 Samuel Chapter number 15, amen, the Bible tells us that it was Saul that was king over Israel, amen. And we see that God tells him through Samuel, amen, to Saul that you are going to go. And you are going to go and destroy Amalek, that you will not allow anything to stand. He tells them not any one of their buildings, their property, their people, or their livestock. Destroy everything that belongs to Amalek. And don't save one thing. Amen. Don't keep one thing alive. And we see here that Saul pursues after Amalek. And, and Saul goes there. Amen. And he goes and he destroys them. Amen. He destroys everything. The Bible tells us. Amen. How far Saul went to kill and to destroy Amalek. He went from one end of the valley all the way almost back to Egypt. He, he destroyed them. He ran them down so they were almost nothing. But the Bible tells us uh, that Saul looked, amen, at King Agag, uh, the king of the Amalekites, and he kept him alive uh, and said, we're taking him back with us, uh, amen. And the Bible tells us that he also and his people... Uh, kept the choices of the spoils, the sheep, the oxen, the best of the things uh, that they had uh, to offer to the Lord and sacrifice. Uh, can I tell you, it was the downfall of Adam and Eve uh, when they began to call things that God called not good, uh, when they began to call them good. It was a moment of their downfall uh, before they ever took a bite of the fruit. Uh, amen. Is the moment, amen, where they messed up is the moment that Eve saw uh, that the food of the fr fruit of the tree was good to eat. Uh, can I tell you, the enemy will always attack you uh, in your perspective uh, ever before he'll ever attack you. Uh, amen. And how you begin to act because he knows if you can begin uh, to change how you look at things uh, and change your priority structure and change, amen, how you value the voice of God in your life, uh, he'll understand, amen. He understands that it won't be very long uh, until you become stumble and begin to fall. Amen. And we see Saul say, you know what, no, we'll keep, we'll keep K-Gag alive and Let's just take the best that they got, and we could do something with it. Amen. I know in the back of his mind, the words of the prophet ringing in his ear saying, No, destroy everything. Don't let anything live. Amen. Uh, 
And I'll tell you this right now. It was there that God began to stir Samuel where he was not even there saying, oh, Saul disobeyed. Even Saul didn't listen. And Samuel grieving in his spirit, wishing that he never anointed Saul as king because he understood, amen, that this was a fulfillment of the promise of going all the way back to Moses in Exodus. Can I tell you, I struggle with this text. How could God say kill all the women and children, kill all, amen, anything that belongs to Amalek? Like I struggle with that in my spirit. God, amen, how could you do that? But you know what? I begin to pray and I begin to ask God. And God opened up my mind. Amen. He opened up a revelation to me and he said, amen, that God hates those things that destroy vulnerable and weak things. Bible tells us, uh, amen, amen, that, that, that there's damnation for those that shed innocent blood, uh, amen, that, they, that they're worse, amen, than anything that they should just tie uh, a stone around their head and throw themselves in the sea, uh, amen, God hates those things uh, in the spirit uh, that desires to destroy uh, in the weak things. And why we see the character of God that says, suffer the little children, uh, suffer those that have no value to me, uh, nothing I could gain, bring them to me, uh, is because I love the vulnerable, I love the weak, uh, amen, those that have deficiencies, those uh, that have needs, bring them to me. When society says, you're not worth anything, when everybody gives up on you, uh, it is Jesus that says, no, bring me those uh, that don't have any value, uh, bring me those, uh, amen, I'm not going to halls of power, I'm going to those that are weary and weak. Why? It's because that's the heartbeat of God. But we see here Saul saying, no, I know better. I know what we need to do. And the Bible tells us that he goes back. Amen. And he meets Samuel. Amen. And Samuel says, Saul, what in the world have you done here? Amen. He said, oh, we did what the Lord asked us to do. And he said, no, Saul, what is that bang of the sheep that I hear? What is the, the, the mooing, amen, of the oxen that I hear? Amen. What is this that I hear? And Saul said, oh, no, that's just, we're going to offer that to the Lord as a burnt sacrifice. Amen. And this is where we get that passage that Samuel says to Saul, that it, the obedience is greater than sacrifice. It would have been better for you, amen. Amen, just to listen uh, to what God had said in that moment uh, rather than you doing what you wanted to do in that moment. What am I telling you, people of God? Uh, amen. I'm telling you here today that it was there in that place, that blind spot of Saul. Uh, in that moment when Saul should have lifted up the banner of Jehovah Nisi. Uh, instead, you know what? He said, I can do it on my own. Uh, I don't need God any longer. Uh, I feel strong. I got the strength. I got the money in the bank account. Uh, I'm feeling good today. I don't need to call on God like I did yesterday. Uh, can I tell you, uh, Saul was not thinking uh, that he was the man that was hiding in the stuff. Uh, amen. When God was looking for somebody to lead his people. Uh, Saul was feeling real good about himself in the moment. Uh, Saul said, look what we have done. Uh, look what we have conquered. Uh, I feel really good. And can I tell you, uh, that was the vulnerability in Saul's leadership. That was the blind spot in Saul's life was that pride that lifted himself up. Amen. And we see that the enemy says, ah, he may be strong, but I see his weak point. The spirit of Amalek. He's going to begin to poke uh, he said, this is going to be the undoing of Saul. And can I tell you, uh, he was there that said, Samuel, uh, Samuel told Saul, he said, you know, the Lord is done with you. He has another. The spirit of Amalek got a hold of Saul in that moment, even though he felt he was strong. That's what Proverbs tells us in, in Proverbs 16. The pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The enemy studies you and I. He looks for our blind spots, and he looks uh, for those moments when we begin to strut our stuff and say, you know, we got this figured out. I don't need God uh, like I did yesterday. Uh, and the enemy begins to say, ah, oh, okay, I know where I can begin to push that spirit of Amalek in them. Uh, amen. The undoing. Uh, amen. The vulnerabilities. Amen. Uh, amen. This is why uh, in our weariness, in these blind spots, in our vulnerabilities, uh, amen, the only solution to them uh, is always uh, to lift up the banner uh, of our Jehovah Nisi, uh, for us always to remind ourselves, uh, amen, that we must trust in the Lord uh, with all of our heart uh, and not lean upon our own understanding. Uh, and the Bible tells us, in all thy ways acknowledge him, uh, and he uh, shall direct uh, thy path. The Bible says, in all thy ways, not in some of the ways, uh, not when it's convenient and not when you are between a rock and a hard place, uh, but when you're on the mountaintop just as much, uh, when you are walking through the valley, uh, amen, you must lean uh, on God. Uh, you must lift up the banner of God as the God, uh, amen, that is always with you. 
May let us never stop lifting up the banner of Jehovah Nisi in our life. Or Jehovah Jireh, rather. As David at Ziglag is going off and he's fighting another battle on another field. And he leaves his family. He leaves his home. He leaves the livestock. And his men come back from winning a victory. And they're, they're beat and they're wore down. They get back home expecting to kick off their boots and kick up their feet and maybe drink a little goat's milk and relax and enjoy themselves. And they get back and they see their homes ablaze. And they see they run and they, they, they throw open the doors of their home and their kids and their family and their wives, their, their wives are gone and everybody's gone. And they look at David and said, David, what in the world did you get us into? Can I tell you what it was? It was a band of the Amalekites that came in as they were fighting another battle that came in and took everything. Amen. They took everything from David and it was there that David goes amen, to one of his men and he says, give me the ephod. Amen. That was the priestly garment. And he says, let me put it on. And he puts on the, the garment of the priest and he goes before the Lord and he says, God, if you will go with me, I will go fight. But God, if you don't go with me, I'm not going to go. And God says, go and destroy the Amalekites. And and David says, all right, we're going to go. And then he looks to his men. He says, we're going to pursue after the Amalekites. And the Bible tells us that over half of David's men, they were weary and they could not go on any longer. But David said, you know, as long as God goes with me and I'm lifting up the banner of Jehovah Jireh, I'm going to be all right. And David went and he destroyed the Amalekites and he brought back everything the enemy took from him. What am I telling you? This is the difference between somebody that's always going to lift up the banner and go before the Lord and say, God, what would you have me to do in this? God, I understand my blind spots. I understand uh, the frailty of my humanity. I understand uh, what I want to do and how I feel right now. But God, uh, I'm going to go before your presence uh, and I'm going to go to a resting place with you uh, and I'm going to call on your name uh, and you lead me and you guide me uh, and you direct my paths. Uh, why? It's because David understood. Uh, you know, I got blind spots. If I respond in anger, uh, that's just the spirit of Amalek. Uh, if I respond in revenge, it's just the spirit of Amalek. But God, lead me uh, and guide me where you would have me to go. We've got to contend, people of God, with the spirit of Amalek. Don't ever forget Amalek. Let's all stand to our feet here today. enemy attacks us in our blind spots. He attacks us in our weariness. He attacks us when we are weak. The enemy also attacks us in places of rest. The desires to withhold back from us these places of rest. Isaiah 28 verse 11 tells us, For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing that they would not hear. Can I tell you, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the presence of God is that rest that we need. And it makes all the sense in the world when you understand the devices of Amalek, the devices of the enemy, that he does everything he can to fight you from praying through into the Holy Ghost. That the enemy does everything he can. Amen. He does everything, every device to distract you and to consume you with worry and cares of this world. Amen. Why? He's doing everything he can to keep you from pressing into that place of rest. Amen. I know that there are stories here today of people, amen, that have come countless times, numerous, dozen times, amen, to the altar praying for the Holy Ghost but never got it quite yet. And it took them some time. It took them. Why? It's because the enemy was doing everything he can, amen, to keep you out of the rest that the Lord desired to give you. There's another place of rest, and that's the house of God. It's among your body of believers. Just as Moses, and I said it earlier, just as Moses needed Aaron and her, can I tell you here today, we all need one another. We don't need to forsake the opportunity that we have, no matter how weary you are, no matter how upset you are, no matter what you're going through. Amen. Anytime these doors are open, this is an opportunity to lock arms with your brother, lock arms with your sister, and say, you know what?
but I, I've been dealing with Amalek all week long. Amen. And this is a place of rest. This is a place of strength. This is a place, amen. The Bible tells us that it is not good for man to be alone. Can I tell you some of our problems that we face during the week is we spend a little bit too much time all alone. Amen. We spend a little bit too much time, amen, by ourselves. Amen. The, the enemy knows if he could just separate you from the people of God and the presence of God. Amen. He could begin to work you down and break you down bit by bit. And begin to corrode and erode your faith bit by bit. Why? Because he understands that you are weakest when you are alone. It's the time to pick up a phone. That's the time. To call on your brother and sister and say, brother, I've been struggling. I've been fighting. Amen. We need to get together. Can we get together sometime? Can we pray? Can we just get together for coffee? Can we can we go for a walk? I just need to be, amen, together. I just need to pray. I need somebody to lock arms with me. Why? It's because I'm in a weary place right now. And I understand that there is rest, amen, with the people of God. One final place, and probably one of the most critical places that the enemy desires to fight and to distract you from your rest that is in your home and that is in your marriage. Songs of Solomon describe him in a relationship between a husband and a wife as a place that was called in Gedi. It's a place that was a garden, amen, that they would run to and that they would be there, a place of refuge, a place of strength. The enemy would do everything he can to cause discord and frustration and anger and in your home and in your marriage. The enemy wants you to feel that you have no place to go, amen, to lay your head at night and feel, amen, a place of peace. The enemy wants to do everything he can to make you feel like you're sleeping with the enemy. And he wants you to do, amen, he wants you to feel like you have no place of rest. But can I tell you, if we could just be aware, amen, that's just the spirit of Am the Amalekites that's trying to get into your home, that's trying to get into your marriage, that's trying to get into your family, amen, and feel that there is no place of rest. But I wonder here today if there would any, be any people of God that would be willing to lift up the banner of God and say, God, amen, I want you to be the banner over my home. I want you to be the banner over my marriage. I want I want you to be the banner over my mind. I want you to be the banner over my relationships. I want you to be that place of refuge and strength that I remind myself, God, that I need you every day, that I need to be in your presence, that I need to call on you. Can we just begin to call on the name of the Lord right now? Amen. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you're weary in body, mind, spirit. I don't know if you've been fighting all week long. Amen. The spirit of Hamalek. Amen. But I wonder here today if you could just be Begin to remind yourself, uh, amen, who you belong to, uh, whose blood was applied on your life uh, when you went down in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, amen. Remind yourself uh, that God is going to fight the battle with you, uh, that God is going to meet you in your place of vulnerability, uh, that God is going to meet you in your weakness, uh, that God is going to meet you in your sickness, uh, that God is going to meet you in those places right now. Come on, let's lift up our hands all across this place right now and begin to call on the name of Jesus. Let's just call on the name of Jesus.